um, is that you can turn this over. And now what you have is a gigantic stamp. So you can, a lot of people don't think about using it this way. Like, let's say you wanted to block print a big piece of fabric. You could do your painting on here and do it. Or if you wanted to do multiple things and you wanted to line them up perfectly. Grab a, grab a chair and, or. Get some extra <laughs> Thank you. So it's very versatile. So one of the things you need is a plate. You need something to put the paint on the plate. I shake everything. You don't really need to shake. You don't ever need as much paint as you think you do. That is tight and buff. That's a little tiny bit of Naples yellow. And I want to find my white. Which is probably not open because I wanted to make sure I had enough white. So you need a little paint. Could you spread it out with a brush? Yes. Could you spread it out with your fingers? Yes. Could you spread it out with a credit card? Yes. Now, I can already tell because I've been doing this for 10, 12 years, that that's too much paint. But what you do is you smear the paint around, you wipe it the extra off, since I already told you I've got too much going on there. And then the other interesting thing is you get different results depending on what you're printing on. So, eyelash yarn. It's hard to find now, except in thrift stores or junk stores, because it sort of had its had its day. I for this one, you noticed I carefully put it down. <laughs> I'm going to put a piece of black paper down. The most important thing when you print is to think about not the colors so much, but the differences in values. The same thing as when you quilt, when you sew, you get much more interesting things when you have your lights and darks next to each other. Now I can kind of feel the thread under here. If I wanted, I could take a brayer. And what you end up with is a very interesting design. Now, what are you going to do with that design? up to the creator, right? Can you use more colors? The answer to that is yes. If you mix the three primaries, red, yellow, and blue, you're going to get brown. I happen to like brown. <laughs> I don't have any problem with that. Bright colors hurt my brain. Sometimes the sheet that you gray it off on is prettier than what you're working on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's these? talcum powder. So we'll go to plan B. <laughs> Although if it shows up, talcum powder is what gives you this neat speckled appearance. Mm -hmm. from else. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do now with a very sophisticated texturing tool called the watered up piece of wax paper <laughs> is create a texture. Same thing. All I'm 
I'm doing. Now, could you do this on a piece of glass? Yes. Could you do it on a piece of rubber? Yes. But the jelly plate gives you some squishiness. So you get neat textures. And so what I'm going to do now. Can I pass these around? Sure. Except I'm a, you can pass it around. It's no, you can pass it, but it's still a little uh, what? What? a little damp. So don't hug it. No. <laughs> but the techniques with the plate give you a lot of. Um, give you a lot of versatility. I am a huge fan of cutting my own stencils and masks. I use a, a product called UFO to do the cuttings just because it gives you Duralar. Um, um, I either use scissors or I use a knife. Yeah, you were asking about can you use There's not enough paint on this to really lift it off. So wherever the plastic is that I put down, it would have been nice if I thought about ahead, but oh well. Highly overrated. So you can get some, and you can see the texture, the, the block, that's not super wet, it's just a little wet. The other thing that, and this paint may not let me do it because it dries fast, the other thing you can do, if you act really quickly, is you can sometimes get what's called a ghost print, which is really the second print. Um, to do that, yeah, it sort of came out. Mm -hmm. I like it. Still very nice. So. Yeah. And you still have the Yubo mm -hmm. on the jelly. Mm -hmm. The, mm -hmm. the Yubo is still on the jelly. Mm -mm. Oh, it's gone. I picked it up and put it away. So that was just the impression of it. Very nice. <laughs> you know, that's the trouble with, with some of the things I do. I can think of them up, and two seconds later, I can say, I don't have any idea what that is. <laughs> oh, it's right there. <laughs> It's funny because depending on your orientation, if your plate is vertical, um, like this one is, your designs also tend to be vertical. So what I'm going to do here 
is the opposite. With that one that's going around, I had the background was basically blue and pink and white. And anybody who wants these is welcome to take them. <laughs> well, you do this on fabric also, right? Hmm? Fabric. Can you, you do it on fabric, fabric as well? You can, but there's some. Because I know doing that would be coming right through on my hands. Yeah. So you can get some really striking black and white things. And what I'd like to do. But you hesitate on fabric. Ordinarily, I wouldn't. I would just keep printing black, but you guys don't want to see more much black all day. <laughs> One of the easiest ways to clean up your jelly plate while the paint dye, you, can you use alcohol ink? Yes. Can you use dye ink? Yes. Can you use oxides? Yes. Um, if you take a class, we'll go into a lot more of that. One of the, or I'm going to do it again. Uh, one of the best things to use is these wet ones, both because they smell really good. And because they have no lint, many baby wipes have an amazing amount of lint. All right, so here we've got a dark one. And I'll use going to be too much paint. You need, for this size plate, I usually work on a 16 by 20 plate, so I'm having a challenge to get to, I'm going to print on top of those. The key thing is not having too much paint, because if you have too much paint, everything slides around, and you get this funny little textured kind of an appearance that is not particularly I recently discovered, I was printing some eucalyptus leaves, I was going to make a stencil, and I decided I'd just go ahead and print them on the Tyvek, and save myself a step. Mm -hmm. And that worked out very well. Is that different paper that you're going to do? Hmm? Is that different paper that's Tyvek? Tyvek. That's another class. It's not. You Ordinarily, I would line these papers. I would take a little bit of trouble to line up the papers. So, think back. I had a mask. I painted black over it. And I put down a layer of whitish green and yellow. Now, Susan, we have a question from... Uh the Facebook Live. What kind of paint are you using currently? <laughs> you saw that with relatively little effort and with three colors of paint, you can turn out some cool stuff. Now, could you do this on fabric? Yes. If you don't use one of artistic artifacts, fabric pa paints, or you don't use a paint specially formulated for fabric, you'll change the hand. The plastic in the acrylic paint won't wash out, but it fills the tiny little pores where the fabric's woven together, so it feels like plastic. So when you're rubbing it, will it come through on your hands? Will it come through as how you're... And the way you deal with that... Paint. This is Golden's fluid acrylic. I have some heavy body liquid tests. I have some open acrylic, which is my very, very favorite, but these tubes run 20 to 30 bucks a pop. So they're pricey to find. Judy doesn't carry them plaza art up at 
not me and Pan Am in this area does. Um, any other questions? Not at the moment. That's it so far. All right. Um, I have a question. How heavy a weight of paper can you read? Can you can you speak? <laughs> how many? Will someone translate for me? How how heavy of a weight of paper? Um, that's an excellent question because this this rice paper mm -hmm. you can print on rice paper tissue paper actually I'll pull up this paint while we're talking mm -hmm. deli paper I like to print on this is a Dick Blick product it's called sulfide paper this is a 90 pound paper when I print at home on Stark white paper, my very favorite is Hammer Hill, which makes a very nice 28 pound super white paper. Do you use cardstock? I don't use cardstock for one simple reason. I would use cardstock if I was making a card, or I was making a poster, or I was. I do a lot of collage, so I want my papers to be thinner so that when I layer them, I don't have the lump. That cardstock will give you. There's no reason uh, you can use any way paper that you want. And you can't see it. Oh, no, we won't bother with that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's the point? Um, I was telling someone one of the other really fun things to print on. I rescue books from dumpsters, not from being used. And this one happens to have India ink also dripped on it. Mm -hmm. And you can cut out masks, or you can make some really interesting kinds of things. Well, let's actually let us use circles. I'm going back, I will talk about what I'm using. I'm going to use a little Titan valve. High, not high flow, liquid. Now, could you use artistic artifacts paint for this? Absolutely. Can you use craft paint? Yes. Did I clean off my brayer? No. So, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to go ahead with what I'm demoing because I already know that I'm going to have a muddy print. So if you put the paint down on your plate and it's not the color you want, it's not the texture you want, it's not what you want, stop. Mm -hmm. And you sometimes get mm -hmm. a really mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. background mm -hmm. to do something mm -hmm. else on top of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. It's oh, just, it's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, who knows what a ream of paper is? How many sheets? I'm on my fifth ream of paper. In 12 years, in all fairness. Um, but who's counting? But who's counting? I by myself, nobody monitors my paint intake or outflow. Now, as far as paper is concerned, does it matter if it's cotton or linen? No. Okay. It can be plastic, cotton. With printing on fabric, it would matter. What matters more than the type of fabric is how tight the weave is. If you have a really loose weave fabric, um, you're not going to get a clean print. You're going to miss it. These were cut out of I don't know what. something. I, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm always experimenting with things that make the best masks. And you will find, if you're printing on fabric, that masks work better than stencils because of the way the lines get defined. Oh. Okay. So, one coat of paint. And like I said, these are up for grabs for whoever wants them. 
You can tell I have a, a certain partiality for uh, plants and birds. <laughs> All right, you saw the yarn. I do a similar thing with string. Carefully measured out. The reason I don't like doing stained glass and how to cross stitch needlepoint is I like the immediate gratification and I like the serendipity mm -hmm. that comes with not knowing what you're going to get. With this one, now why did I plan on black paper instead of this orange piece of paper? No reason. And the next thing I'm going to do is pin on a piece of fabric. Oh, I had two pieces of fabric. Now I am. Also makes paper into two stickers with a variety of different products. Yeah. So when you get something you don't like, you've got a dark background, you've got a light top layer, you let it dry, and then you do something over the top that in this case I'd probably pick a different color entirely. So fabric. Pardon. Let's see. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not making it. Well, I'm not. People are interested in seeing what you've made. <laughs> I'm actually not a klutz, but you wouldn't know that from today. That's one of the reasons <clears throat> I shake up my paint, because this, that is Payne's Gray, which is my favorite color. My second favorite color is, excuse me, nickel azo gold. Now, I'm putting, I'm deliberately putting more paint down. because the fabric absorbs much more paint than paper does. No secret there. All right, so let's go back to that and we'll add a little can say this demo is supposedly over and we're going to do the next one but if you don't want to go anywhere I don't need to go anywhere all right I'm going to put down fabric now with the fabric I put down the tissue paper because I don't want all of it on my hands. The other really important thing that you've probably seen me do is I go around the edges of the mask, the stencil, the string, whatever it is, because that helps define it. It moves the paint into the fabric and away from it. Now, this is either going to be wonderful. <clears throat> Or 
adoring fans on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's actually 1230. And <laughs> does anybody have any questions? I want to share with you we, we that Susan did ask us if we could get a class together yeah. before today in order to announce it. And we could not because, take a look at our store. <laughs> We've been really busy, but it is something we're going to try to work on. We're um, only doing classes that we can put in our warehouse, and we have to limit it, obviously, so everybody's got their space, but keep your eye out. We'll be talking to you. And I would love to see you in class, and you will love it. You absolutely will love it. The people that make me smile a little bit are people that invest in the jelly plate but leave it in its clamshell. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I know that's kind of an interesting ghost print. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for attending. Come pick up whatever you like. And we'll see if we're going to do it again. Or Oh, um, actually, we have one question, and we do actually have a little bit more time if you want to do one more demonstration. Okay. Um, but do you ever use a heat gun for, if you uh, do this on a fab? If you do this on fabric? To dry the fabric? Yeah. You could use a heat gun on the fabric. You absolutely must not use a heat gun on the plates. Oh my God! You gotcha. can't leave them in a hot car. You can't do anything with heat on the plate itself. But once you take the plate, I mean, once you take it away, use anything you want. It's just a cooling thing. Fantastic. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. All right. I'm going to do. Thank you. I love teaching this class because we have so much fun. You're going to have to sign this. All right. Any last questions on Facebook Live? Feel free to post now. Me. Oh, good. Okay, good. Oh, okay. All right. You know, the one thing I didn't say is that my name is Susan Gantz. And most of the people here know that because it's posted in the information. Well, that's okay. We. All right. I, that is all for today, folks. Thank you.